Hi everyone! So, it's been a long time since we met each other virtually. How are you guys doing lately? Hello guys! You're actually right, Rika. It's been months already since the last time we used Google Meet. But anyway, going back with your question, we already had our full face-to-face -face classes, right? And it's really tiring to be honest. Especially when you have to walk very far from one classroom to another just for your next class. It's even more tiring than the actual studying though. Just kidding. That's funny, Marlo. I am feeling the same thing as well. But on a brighter side, college is quite bearable right now. Actually, because you already have your companions right next to you that you can talk and hang with. In it somehow relieves me from stress caused by academics. It is way different from what we had during our freshman year. I really agree with what you said, Maria. I believe that the bond between your classmates is a factor in this college. And it is really important to have friends that will motivate and inspire during the difficult times. So moving on, what, what do we have for this day? Oh, do you remember about the book that I've told you before to read? The one that's entitled America is in the Heart by Carlos Duruzan? I really want to know your sentiments about the book, guys. I expect you have read it. I have actually read it, and I'm quite sad about how the Filipinos are being treated by the Americans. Filipinos in America were subjected to violent racism and discrimination on a daily basis. They were even denied access to whites-only establishments, were forbidden from getting married to white people, were assigned the poorest positions, and were treated like destitutes by the police. True. Actually, you may come to the conclusion that Car Carlos Bulusan's personal stories of his childhood experiences and his utter unhappiness in America are exaggerated or far from the truth as he read, read them or immediately afterward. I assumed as much because I was ignorant of the, of the actual circumstances facing of OFWs. But you may come to the deeper conclusion that Carlos Bulusan must have had personal motives. This book may open the eyes of others outside of the Filipino immigrant community as well. My heart was almost torn. Unlucky, Alos. I might have responded, I didn't know, had his autobiographies and other writings not been out when he was suffering from the Russian poverty, national brutality, and stubborn discrimination in America. I wish the Philippine government had said it herself, or so did America. They ignored or were deaf to reality though, so I assume they were preoccupied with World War II preparations. Um, Carlos Bulusan reminds me a little of one of my favorite writers, Richard Wright. Carlos Bulusan shared Richard Wright's desire for freedom from the unfair social social political system, since his parents were ad adamant about him sending to school. He also dreamed of being educated through voracious reading. He also experienced issues with the survival of the fittest. Carlos Bulusan, on the other hand, never had the opportunity to become well-known among the literary elite, unlike Richard Wright. Sadly, Carlos, he could have received an education and established a reputation for himself in Philippine literature if it weren't for his poverty. He could have pursued his dream of becoming a doctor when he was younger. Since reading it, I have become more patriotic and I have grown to love my country more. When I learned more about the story, I can't deny that I became enraged at Americans and wanted to hold them responsible for the hardships that my people and other Asians had endured. Not just in the past, but still now. I guess I can't blame them because they might be stereotypes, avatars, and archetypes. Their dominant mindset is a product of their history. Considering how little I know about international history, 
I had the impression that racism and cruelty were not only exclusive to black Americans. After all, these things exist elsewhere. I have a question. Can you cite some quotes in the story that show the despair of the, prota of the protagonist, particularly Alos, in the story? I have read a part which says, I sat in the living room and watched lonely Filipinos fall at the semi-nude girls. I felt angry and lost. Where in this white country could I go? I felt the way other Filipinos felt. I rushed out and cursed the cold night. The promise of America finally left our protagonist feeling dejected after around 100 pages. In this quotation, a character struggles to fit in in this strange land full of danger. He believed he might flee here. Is that right? Alice fled the violence and poverty of his home country only to find it there when he sought the American dream. He encountered violence and poverty that was at least as bad as what he had left behind. Uh, there's this statement also which says, I felt like running away anywhere. I wanted to cast off the sudden room that shadowed our family and I thought the only way to do that was to escape from him. I would also be escaping from my family and from the bitter memories of childhood. The semi-autobiographical book is largely centered on the notion of running away. Our protagonist makes the decision to leave this village, which is plagued by peasant revolutions, land grabbing, and an unbelievable amount of poverty. This remark perfectly captures the desire to move away, improve one's circumstances, and pursue the American dream. How about Eureka? Um, as for me, this certain statement that caught my attention, Father kicked the dirt off his feet and said, Your brother Leon is still fighting in Europe. Maybe he is dead now. I have not heard from him. He took the rope again and flipped it gently and suggestively across the carabao's back. And the two of them, the patient animal and my father, walked slowly and industriously industriously away, the sharp blow blade breaking smoothly through the rich soil between them. This passage is significant for two reasons. First, it introduces the concept of a Filipino abroad who is presumed dead as a result of another country's conflict. And second, it demonstrates the father's mother-of-fact manner in which he informs his son that his older brother is already dead as if the father has already grown numb to the idea. So, I have a question also. What does the author find most hurtful in his struggles with being an immigrant? The most painful aspect of Bulasan's hardships as an immigrant is the difficulty of just surviving in America. Bulasan learns that being an, an immigrant in America is challenging sort of hardship after leaving his native Philippines with so much hope and promise since what he was heading toward would have to be better than what he experienced. Bulosan acknowledges that America is a place where struggle and injustice exist when he encounters exploitation and injustice in his first job, saying, It was the beginning of my life in America the beginning of a long flight that carried me down the years, fighting desperately to find peace in some corner of life. Bulosan recognizes that in many ways, it was a crime to be a Filipino in California. I discovered that my folks did not have unfettered access to the streets. It is a world where sites constantly show that the humanized existence Bulosan and many others live, one where dogs and Filipinos not allowed. These experiences bring with them a particular agony, an everlasting hurt about what it means to have trusted in the hopes and promises of the Garden of Hope only to encounter a barren wasteland of crushed hopes. I agree. This becomes a key component of what Bulusan finds the most upsetting about his experiences as an immigrant. 
It is an experience where the allure of potential conflict with the object injustice. This condition where faith and hope are met head on with the reality that denies both becomes the location where Kurt exists in his struggles with being an immigrant. I have a question as well. Since the theme of the book goes against the nationalist sentiment of the novel's title, what is the overall significance of this? I am curious about the differing, con contradictory descriptions of America in this novel and wish to hear further analysis of this. Hmm. Other immigrants, uh, however, saw America as a country of opportunity where they might pursue a better and wealthier life. This included Bulusan. The fact that the narrator faces a number of challenges such as racism and prejudice on his path to upward mobility does not diminish the novel's Americanness. America is in the heart has also been con contrasted with the most American of autobiographies such as Benjamin Franklin's. Bulusan's book eventually depicts a narrator who is successful in breaking into the American mainstream, even if it is not a, a linear, rags to riches story like Frank Lips. The heart image also serves as the story, as the story's epilogue and transforms into a representation of America, a vast heart that extends a cordial invitation to the immigrant. However, given all the challenges the narrator faced, it is unclear whether his successful involvement in American life or his idealized or mythical perception of the nation as a place of opportunity is what led him to this conclusion. So, another question. Which one of Alo's brothers went to school while the family worked to pay for his education? Uh, it is Macario, uh, Alo, Alo's older brother. Uh, this is crucial for the family because Macario will be able to support them by getting a job due to his schooling. But until Makari finishes school, Alos has worked alongside his mother selling fruit to make ends meet. The sacrifice made by Makari's parents to pay for his education are tremendous. Unfortunately, Makari doesn't seem overly appreciative for the chance that has provided to him. Uh, he develops into a bit of a snob, considering his family to be little more than uncultured pisans. Alos is reprimanded for wearing long hair when he gets home, making him feel uncultured. He also threatens to leave school if he doesn't get more money from his poor parents, showing yet another sign of his developing insensitivity. Makario never once acknowledges the significant sacrifices his family has made in order to provide for his schooling. Right, guys? True. 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 I agree. Huh. By the way, it was nice hearing your sentiments, guys. You know, I thought you you did not read the book, but you did, and I felt happy about it. Yeah, the book was actually good and somehow interesting, though. Told you. Uh, indeed, I wasn't able to know that this is how we are treated by other races, if not because of this group. I agree. Anyway, it was fun chatting with you guys. I really enjoyed this conversation a lot. I still have to do some errands and I wish I can bond with you a little longer. Let's call it a day, I guess. Ooh, me too. See you all again in school, guys. Bye! Bye.